Hi everyone and welcome to the next video in the series on the Poison Pawn Winnower. This time we're going to have a look at another quick win for Black and the game we're going to analyse was played in Havana in 1963 between Eldis Kobo Artiega with the white pieces and Borislav Ivkov with Black. Artiega is not a well known player but he was a very strong player nonetheless and won the Cuban National Championships jointly in 1950 and later became an international master. The Serbian GM Ivkov, on the other hand, is more famous, having been a world champion candidate in 1965, partaking in four other candidate tournaments, and winning many top-level tournaments over the course of his still-ongoing career. So to get underway, anyway, Artiega opened with d4, and the opening transposed into a French defence after e6, e4, and d5. Then came the mainline winner with knight c3, bishop b4, e5, and then a slightly different move order to reach the position we've looked at in previous videos, with knight e7, a3, bishop takes c3 check, b takes c3, c5, queen g4, queen c7, queen takes g7, rook g8, queen takes h7, and c takes d4. I'll assume by this stage of the series that you know the particulars of this exact position already, so I won't go over them again. Um, Artiega continued with the main line, knight e2, and then came knight bc6 and f4 in order to maintain the pawn at e5 so that white has some claim to the center, although black's claim at this stage is stronger with better developed pieces and three central pawns against one. Now came d takes c3, queen d3, bishop d7, and bishop e3, which isn't the best move available to white. Generally speaking, the dark square bishop belongs on the a3 to f8 diagonal in the winnower, and better here was either knight takes c3 or queen takes c3. In either case, white remains a pawn up and black has nothing immediately, although his lead in development could prove dangerous if exploited accurately. So bishop e3, anyway. Now came knight f5 from Ivkov, and this is the first move that takes us out of the book lines. Effectively, this move was played with tempo because Artiega didn't want to lose his bishop pair, and so played now bishop f2 and d4 was then played by Ivkov in order to defend his pawn at c2 um, although this pawn at d4 can be taken now Artiega declined it as he did previously with the pawn on c3 and again I think this was to preserve his bishop pair and overvaluing the bishops is something that many a GM has fallen prey to the current world number one, Veselin Topolov, is known for doing it, as was Bobby Fischer on occasion, and often it is warranted at GM level because it does improve winning chances by as much as 5-10% to 10 in some cases, and it certainly makes it harder for the opponent to draw. So much so that GMs these days will often not give up the bishop pair unless they get some kind of positional or material compensation. In this position, Artiega's dark square bishop is certainly a powerful piece, seeing as there's no black counterpart, but really he should have exchanged it off here in order to win a pawn. What he did play was knight g3, which is hoping for an open h-file for his rook if a knight takes g3, or maybe also hoping to do some damage to, pawn to, to black's pawn structure with knight takes f5 and uh, he takes f5, or if uh, black wants to avoid that, he's going to have to retreat his knight, so that's good for white too. too. Um, but Ivkov was content to finish development now by castling queenside, and here, objectively speaking, the game is equal, but black is about to gain some good initiative, as you'll see, and exploit his lead in development excellently. Artiega now took on f5 and did that damage to Ivkov's pawn structure, and after e takes f5, he played bishop h4, which is moving his bishop for a third time, which is unwise at this stage of the game, just on general principles. A better idea would have been to start initiative on the king's side, 
by moving the H pawn. Um, because you know it's a passed H pawn, it's one of White's assets in the winnower. Or another idea would be playing G three and Fee and Shadow in Kingside and castling, just getting ready for the middle game. Um it should be noted here too that Bishop takes D four is of course losing after Bishop E six, discovering a second attacker on the bishop and pinning it and uh winning it on the next move. Um so that's obviously no good. So Bishop H four anyway, attacking a rook. So then came rook d e8 and king f2 from Artiega, which is one of the moves that Fritz recommended despite its loss of casting rights for white. Superficially it seems to be okay as there's no direct way for black to get at white's king for now. And Ivkov answered with rook g4, attacking this bishop. And Artiega responded with g3 in order to defend it, but this is a weak move. It Looks like it makes sense, it defends the bishop, prepares the fiend's shadow, um, but better was bishop g3, where it remains equal. After g3, Ivkov managed to break through the defences of Artiega with a rook takes e5, a spectacular way to break through, and a very effective one. Although uh, the resulting position, remarkably enough, remains equal. However, the point is that for the material investment, Ivkov is able to mount pressure on his opponent, as you'll see. And as we've seen in previous videos, it's very hard not to crack when you're under pressure. Artiega accepted the sacrifice with f takes e5. And then came knight takes e5. So black has two pawns and the initiative for his sacrifice rook. But the point is that Fritz assesses the position as equal, but only if white plays perfectly. So for the sacrifice material, Black is forcing White to play perfectly and he's able to mount the pressure on it and it's very, very hard not to go wrong in situations like that. And Artiega did so immediately with Queen D1. Better was Queen E2, where after Queen C5 and Bishop H3, Black has only a small advantage. Um, so we go back to Queen D1. Anyway, and here Ivkov found a great move to continue his attack, and it's the only move that retains the advantage for black. If you want to try and spot it, then stop the video now. Rook takes h4 is what he played, and now black has a winning advantage after g takes h4 and knight g4 check, regardless of where white moves his king. And to make matters worse, Artiega answered with king e1, which was not the best move. To put up the most resistance, he should have played king g1, but even then comes the simple d3, opening lines up to the white king and thus winning easily. Best play continues c takes d3 and queen f4, threatening mate on f2, and the best way for white to deal with this is queen e2, but now comes queen d4 check, king g2, knight e3 check, king f2, knight c2 with discover check, king g2, Knight takes a1, and the position is just absolutely winning for black, with too many threats for white to meet. Among them is bishop c6 check, winning at least the exchange, and a simple c2, and threatening to queen the c pawn. Um, Fritz gives an advantage of over six pawns at this stage, so it's absolutely game over for black, so he's uh, completely hopeless, really, after the initial rook sacrifice. It's a great vision from Ivkov. But king e1, anyway, is what Artiega played. And queen f4, now from Ivkov, is absolutely winning. Uh, with mate threats immediately on f2. And the only move in order to avoid a relatively quick mate is what Artiega played with queen e2. But now came a crushing and unexpected blow. And if you want to try and spot it, then stop the video now. Bishop b5 is a brilliant decoy move from Ivkov that forces mate. And of course the bishop can't be taken by the queen or its mate with queen f2 check, king d1 and queen d2. Um, but now the queen has to move and in doing so move away from its crucial defense of the e3 square. Artiega moved it to the correct square in order to hold out for the longest with e2. But after queen e3 check he resigned seeing it was totally lost. His best, ho his best hope <coughs> excuse me, is uh, bishop e2. If instead king d1, then knight f2 check forces queen f2, queen takes f2, and it's mate in 3. The queen takes f2, bishop e2, queen e3, bishop takes b5, queen d2. 
So after queen e3 check, it has to be bishop e2. Uh, but now comes queen d2 check, king f1, the only move, and now knight e3 check wins the queen and the game quickly. So that's it, a great game from the brilliant Ivkov. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.